49th year. Next year will be the 50th anniversary of Stonewall. And yes, I was already an adult then, so... Okay, let's go and... Uh, so this is the oh, first... Yeah, watch it, and, then okay. it and then I'll tie it up for you. Yep. Yeah, that'll, Here, I'll, I'll tie it back up. <laughs> okay, everybody, welcome to the first annual Roselle Park Pride Month celebration. We opened by raising the flag. Uh, to me, Pride is, well, as I said a little while ago, I believe this is the 49th year. Stonewall was June 25th of 1969, which I think coincidentally is the same day the Supreme Court legalized marriage a couple of years ago. But <clears throat> Pride today shows the great diversity of the gay community. I mean, I was the first, as everybody here knows, I think, the first openly gay candidate to run for council in Roselle Park. I lost both times, but I don't believe it was because I was gay. Uh, now we have two elected gay councilmen, Joe DiOrio and his husband, which I think is fantastic. Um, and it, the diversity of the gay community is phenomenal. It's, I'm an old hippie, and you know, when I grew up in the year, well, I was born in 48, so when I grew up, I told my parents in 1964, that was something you didn't do in those days. In fact, most people in Minnesota didn't know what gay was. So it was very hard, but very traumatic. I spent my teenage years, a lot of it on the street because it was so unbearable at home. Even though my parents were good people and fairly understanding, it just was still too traumatic. And I didn't come out because I had a lot of courage. I came out because I was being torn apart inside. I just couldn't deal with being deceitful about who I was. So, uh, you know, I'd like to tell the story of... Uh, I talked to my grandmother, and it's a long story, but I'll make it very short, about how do I come out to my parents. But first, she didn't know, so I had to tell her. And the moment I told her, she looked at me and she said, well, so what? Every family's got to have one. And from that moment on, it made it easier. My mother actually got to the point where she um, was, couldn't you at least be bisexual? And then after that, you've got to remember the time, this is the 60s. And then after that, it was like, wow, no woman's ever going to take my son away from me. But the challenges for gay people, especially young people, are still incredible. Some people's families who are incredibly religious make their children's lives unbearable. I, I can remember the first kid in Minnesota that died of AIDS. His parents did not go to his funeral because he was gay. And I, I just can't understand that. My parents were still always there for me. So today there are resources and things available. Joel was involved with young gay kids a lot in town. There are things available for kids that weren't there when I was, and that's why I ended up on the street so much. But you can't lose sight of the fact that gay suicides among gay teenagers is still far higher than the population at large. And that says there's still a long way to go. Society may on the surface accept us, but deep down below, a lot of those people who say, Hi, I, I love you, you know, don't. And a lot of kids, but parents can't deal with it. You know, it's not always a question of being narrow-minded. Uh, my husband has 15 to 16 kids, and his parents found out about him and his older brother both being gay on the same day. It took them years to recover from that. And it wasn't narrow-mindedness or bigotry. It was just a big whammy for them to handle. So, again, there, there's a lot that's so important that has to be done. And Roselle Park is a great town for gay people. Any place where I can run for council and be competitive, and then, you know, 10 years later we have openly gay candidates who actually get elected, says a lot about this town. It's a diverse town. We have gay people I've never, ever seen or heard of a problem that anybody had in this town because they're gay. I may not see everything, but to me that's important. And, uh, you know... Everybody's not as lucky as I was. I was strong-willed, and so I made it, you know, and I've never hidden my sexuality ever in my life. Other people don't have that luxury, or you know, 
have that ability. Sometimes it's just an ability. You don't have that. And uh, I respect that. It, it's hard for them. It tears families apart. You know? Today we offer places of support for kids that have those problems. When I was, it was only the street. And that delayed my growing up by 10 years at least. So I've spoken enough. Um, first, I want to ask Freeholder Daddy Jane Kowalski to come up and say something. Thank you. be here with uh, our great representatives of Roselle Park and uh, um, here with Danny Newbury of our uh, can the, the first county office on LGBTQ affairs. Um, just a sign of the kind of change that has happened in New Jersey that Michael has mentioned. Years ago, people didn't want to understand that we need to be tolerant of people of whatever their sexual preference, whatever their beliefs, their, their religion, their racial background. This is America, this is New Jersey. We are an inclusive society and here in Union County and here in Roselle Park, we are on the cutting edge of that. So um, I'm very pleased to be here to raise the Gay Pride flag at the beginning of uh, Gay Pride Month and um, we have a number of activities in support of, uh, of gay pride throughout this month, which I think Danny can probably talk with us about. Um, but um, I, I'm really honored to be here and honored to know that Roselle Park supports the gay community and is going to continue to pull people to work together, not dividing us. So thank you. and. Uh, Say something? Just something briefly, and I, I think this goes a long way to say about, talk about what Rosa Park is about in its inclusivity. I want to thank the library in particular, because they, to me, they were the first government organization to actually promote, uh, promote pride, um, to have uh, resources and books accessible to anyone who is LGBTQ um, before it was fashionable, before it was the talk. Um, so my hat's off to the library because bulletin with, boards every right, year. Right, bulletin <laughs> boards and even, I, and I was actually quite amazed when uh, I was planning my wedding with, with Thas and uh, this is before marriage was, was legalized um, in New Jersey, matter of fact, and, I, and I, she knew about it and Susan, the past director, said, hey, yeah, we have books on that. You want to play over here? Let me show you the books that we have. I'm like, are you kidding me? We have this stuff? So um, thank you to the library and Kit uh, being here on behalf of the library because, uh, like I said, before everyone was talking about it, the library was already doing it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, my hat's off to you. Thank you. I want to thank everybody for coming. It really means a lot to, to all of us at the county head representatives here. And, uh, you know, let's make this an ongoing thing every year and make you know, Gay Pride a big part of Roselle Park's community life. Right. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Because she actually forgot my name. So. <laughs> <laughs> How's it? It's like a movie. Yeah, I know, it's rough too. Yeah, we just, uh, we had another road. Improvement. Right? I had this wrist problem, so. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so that would not be good. How's that? That's bad. Perfect.